okay for us. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for gathering us here this morning and also some are in afternoon. We praise your name for your unceasing mercy and grace mm. in spite of all our human shortness mm. and weakness. We haven't sinned against you over and over, but your love and grace mm. never abandoned us. Lord Father, we ask your mercy upon Ukraine. Mm. We ask your protection and provision mm. to our co-workers and brothers and sisters. Mm. Lord Father, we ask your mercy upon young generation. So many informations mm. and theories and opinions inundate but Lord Father we want to go back to Bible mm. we want to train them and make them the follower of Jesus mm. please help them to grow into knowing you and lay their foundation on your word we thank you so much for this time of Bible study mm. and by studying the Old Testament we may see the greater picture of your salvation work mm. and so that we can find our role and purpose mm. in the outline of salvation history. Mm. Thank you so much for Shepherd Nehemiah's leading and please give inspiration, insight so that he can continue train and decide, make disciples among young students and please bless um, Noah and Shani, missionary Caleb and Suzanne to open heart to learn something new from today's lesson. And bless our um, other co-workers to join mm -hmm. us so that we could also share, share the grace and, and, uh, and inspiration through this mm -hmm. Bible study. Please be with us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your prayer. Yeah. Okay. Sylvia is coming. Yeah. Oh, Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining. Hello. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, today we will study uh, Isaiah chapter 10 through 12. Yeah. 10 through 12. Uh, yeah. 10, the remnant of Israel. Uh, God is concerned about the human rights and he hates injustice. Uh, in the days of Isaiah, uh, the southern Judah uh, was full of uh, injustice. Many rich people oppressed poor people and the religious readers were very hypocritical and yeah, mm, it's full of wickedness. So God wanted to punish them uh, through Assyria. Through Assyria. Uh, yeah. When we read uh, the book of Jeremiah, we can realize that God wanted to punish uh, Judah through Babylonia. Babylonia. Huh? Uh, yeah. Isaiah lived 100 years before uh, mm, Jeremiah. So at the time, God used Assyria. And later, God would uh, use uh, Babylonia. Uh, anyway, verse 1 and 2. Uh, he warned the leaders of Israel that he would use Assyria as a road to discipline them for making unjust laws, for depriving the poor of their rights, for oppressing God's people. Yeah. 
Mm, uh, you know, Israelites had been slaves uh, all together under uh, the Parao. They had been saved by God's grace. So they started equally. But in the promised land, yeah, uh, gradually they were poor people and rich people. So the gap between uh, rich people and poor people is wider and wider. Uh, God wanted to make them equal through the uh, law of Jubilee. Do you know the Jubilee? Uh, every 50 years, all the people go back to their own uh, uh, properties. And there's no slaves. Yeah, it's a uh, freedom. Mm. Yeah, uh, it was made, but in reality, it was not done. Uh, in the history of Israel. Do you know why? Because of greediness. Uh, yeah. Even now, uh, it's a big problem, the uh, gap between rich people and poor people. Yeah. Mm. I heard that uh, only a few rich people have a lot of properties in in America, even America. Do you know how many percent are the, uh, the rich people in uh, big companies? How about Indonesia? Only a few rich people do uh, control the properties in the uh, whole the Indonesia? It's so big. It is really big. Um, maybe like about 20% of Indonesian population is Chinese Indonesian. And that 20% of Chinese Indonesian will, will possess mm. more than 80% of, oh, 80 oh. of Indonesia. So, mm. um, oh, Chinese are rich. Yeah, Chinese Indonesian are rich. Mm. Um, that's also part of the history. Chinese Indonesian, they, they couldn't couldn't be the mm. um, they cannot get the government job. Mm. Oh, so because of that, the Muslim and Islam power mm. is prohibiting Chinese people mm. to uh, like you know any government or the leadership mm. position. So because of that, they have to choose the business, and because oh. business, they have mm. more wealth. So mm. most of companies. Big companies are owned by Chinese, and the properties mm. are owned by Chinese. Mm. And um, yeah, the gap is really big. You could you could mm. live very luxurious lifestyle in Indonesia, while mm. most of people are mm. in very um, shitty minimal lifestyles. <laughs> then, uh, is there any terrorism? Uh, by uh, Indonesian people to um, Chinese? There are some extreme most, uh, Muslim um, mm. Islamic party and then they, they keep on mm. trying to attack churches, Christian uh, community, and mm. also uh, like different uh, mm. places. But mm. it's, it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare. Because, because it's on, on the news, right? That seems to be very threatening, but it is not that uh, like always happening. Mm. Generally, Indonesian people are very generous and then they are uh, accepting the diversity. Mm. To my surprise, uh, okay. maybe, maybe like, you know, other country mm. will be more extreme. Among, among the Muslim country, Indonesia is the biggest Muslim country mm. in terms of the number. Yet they are more, how can I say, mm. uh, open and more accepting to other day diversity. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, why do you think the uh, rich Israelites oppress the poor people? They are holy nation, eh? mm -hmm. the priestly nation. They have to take care of. Uh, widows, orphans, and poor people, but in reality, they did not. Noah, why do you think the holy 
Israelites did not uh, take care of their own people, poor people. Oh, your internet connection is not good. No. No, we cannot hear your voice. I think it's some problem. How old are you in LA? Sylvia? Are there rich people? Many rich people? Uh, is, is there many rich people in LA? Mm. Uh, mm. Orange County? <laughs> I feel like Orange County is more affluent than LA. Mm. Um, yeah, but just the whole of California, like the prices for homes here, especially, mm. are very expensive. Super expensive. I don't know um, what it's like compared to different to other states, but um, I know that California is definitely in the top, if not the first one in the U.S. That is um, one of the most expensive states to live in. So, yeah. So um, you can clearly see the disproportion between the rich and the poor. You can really tell. If you go into um, the more affluent neighborhoods to mm. like the uh, more poor um, mm. neighborhoods, you can see the discrepancy between the two. Mm. Yeah. Very. So I think I heard that many Koreans are moving to the southern area of America, Texas or Georgia. Huh? Um, yeah, I know those places. Um, they have more affordable homes compared to California, at least. Mm. Yeah, okay. a lot of Californians are moving to Texas too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, I read in an article uh, because even my family we were thinking about moving to Texas because we have relatives there. We oh. have relatives there, so oh. we wanted to be with them. Mm. That was our main reason. But um, <laughs> I was reading up on some articles about Texas because I don't know much about it. Um, but I came across this one article that was saying that people from Texas don't want, especially mm. people from California, to move there <laughs> because <laughs> then the prices will start uh, increasing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was um, a little funny. <laughs> yeah. So three years ago, I visited uh, Atlanta. Uh, I was so surprised that there are so many Korean shops. So many Koreans are moving to the southern part. So it's, it's so many uh, Korean restaurants and shops. Yeah. Mm. Because of it, the housing fee is up and up in uh, uh, Atlanta as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, to deprive the poor of their rights yeah? and uh, withhold ju justice from the oppressed of my people, making uh, widows their prey and robbing the uh, fatherless. Wow, huh? that was very selfish and cruel. Huh? Uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, God uh, told his people to take care of the uh, weak persons, but they did not eh, uh, keep the law. So God was uh, angry about his people. So God wanted to punish them. Mm. These selfish leaders would fall with this, the slain or cringe among the captives. Yeah. He wants his people to repent and turn to him for healing and victory, yeah. Uh, many, some people think that our repentance is a spiritual repentance, but uh, 
um, practical economical uh, yeah, reformation is necessary for the justice economically, uh, politically. Uh, God deals with it in the book of Isaiah. So the leaders, economic leaders and political leaders should uh, uh, do all things with the justice. It's very important, the justice. Uh, yeah. Uh, so God wants his people to repent and turn to him for healing and victory. Mm. God used Assyria as the rod of punishment on uh, mm, Israel. But now uh, Assyria became so arrogant over God. Uh, okay, Susan, can you read the verse 7 and 8? Uh, but this is not what he intends. This is not what he has in mind. His purpose is to destroy, to put an end to many nations. Mm. Are not my commanders all kings, he says. Mm. Yeah, and uh, nine. Oh. Uh, has not Kauno fared like uh, Karshemish? Mm. Is not Hamid like Arpad and Samaria like Damascus? Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, God wanted to punish Israel through Assyria, but uh, mm, how did Assyria do that? God wanted to uh, use his country for punishment, but uh, Assyria became so arrogant and proud. Uh, yeah, they uh, thought that um, uh, he would, uh, Assyria would dominate the world. Yeah. They put an end to many nations. Are not my uh, commanders all kings? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, verse uh, 5 says, Woe to the Assyrian, the rod of my anger, in whose hand is a club of my wrath. Yeah. They are only the rod and club, huh? but they wanted to have a power to rule over all the country. Uh, it's a problem. Mm. Susan, what do you think about the attitude of Assyria? Uh, Very well. I mean, as as you put, they became very arrogant mm. because God used them to mm. punish other nations and mm. to destroy others. Uh, but it wasn't really God's intention to mm. like put them on like a pedestal or anything, but just kind of use them more as a weapon. Mm. Yeah. Uh, anyone can be used by God for his own purpose, but they should be very careful. Uh, they are not, not by their own power and wisdom and their righteousness. Uh, they are only the instrument. Uh, but when they are exalted, they can misunderstand. Oh, I am precious. I am special. I am great. Uh, uh, so we can see many countries, uh, uh, Assyria the Great, Babylon the Great, eh? Persian the Great, Roman the Great, and King uh, Alexander the Great. Uh, but the, uh, their end was not good. Yeah. Because they uh, became so arrogant and proud. 
So there's the one uh, problem is the culmination is the near to the cliff. Do you agree with that? The peak of the mountain, the peak is the uh, near to the cliff. Uh. <laughs> uh, Suzanne, can you uh, agree with it? The greatness uh, uh, and the culmination huh? can be dangerous. Uh, yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. There are uh, some uh, celebrities who uh, became very uh, famous, uh, but if they are arrogant, uh, suddenly they cannot uh, fall down. Suddenly. Yeah. Where is the Assyria now? Syria and Babylon is Iraq and Persia is Iran. You know, uh, how about now, uh, Assyria? So many refugees, uh, so many people uh, wandering here and there as refugees. Uh, because the Syria is very chaotic. Huh? Yeah, they're very miserable nowadays. Uh, because God, uh, because they became very arrogant, God punished them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, God's anger against these people would soon turn. Even though God was angry and punished these people, God fundamentally loved these people, so he would soon turn. He would punish the king of Assyria for his uh, arrogance and willful pride. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Noah, please read verse 12. Please unmute. Hello? Hello? Oh. Which verse again? Uh, 12, 12. 12? Mm. Chapter, Chapter 10. Chapter 10. When the Lord has finished all his work against Mount Zion and Jerusalem, he will say, I will punish the king of Assyria mm. for the willful pride of his heart mm. and the haughty look in his eyes mm. yeah what do you think about that according to verse 12 so i i think i think god's saying when when i'm done with israel when, mm. when i'm done with my people mm. then i'll see then I will see and deal with King of Assyria mm. because he is extremely prideful. Mm. Yeah. Because uh, uh, God's people degenerated, God punished them by using Assyria. But it does not mean that Assyria was righteous. Huh? Uh, they were only instrument, but they uh, were uh, proudful, uh, prideful, and yeah, haughty. God would punish them as well. Yeah, so God detests this uh, pride. God uh, is pleased with humble humility, but yeah, so we have to be. Uh, uh, careful not to be uh, 
uh, proud. Yeah? Uh, the uh, proudness is the uh, most serious enemy in our spiritual lives. No, why do you think uh, the people be become proud? It's it's kind of with our society, at least in America, and I think in most, if not all, all the developing countries, mm. everybody starts feeling comfortable. It's mm. a feeling of, oh, I have everything. Mm. And no one ever goes to the mindset of humility mm. in in general mm. until you feel like you've lost it all mm. and then of course then resentment can settle in but obviously in the baseline mm. it's kind of like that old saying you never appreciate anything until it's gone mm. so so yeah, I think that's really big, especially in the American society. Mm. Okay, Mr. Caleb, uh, in the UK, uh, British people can be proud because they had uh, great work in the history. Do you feel the British people are proud before many Asian country people? What, what did you feel in UK? Sometimes I um, I felt like the, the attitude toward me mm. <laughs> very proud <laughs> <laughs> because my um, explanation and mm. speaking style is very uh, lower, uh, poor, and uh, <laughs> when I ask something. Pass mm. me, and they just kind of through, you know, they, they <laughs> don't gently give me just through, <laughs> mm. like the, through the, uh, you know, the garbage, you know, the, mm. yeah, like uh, their attitude sometimes are uh, mm. very proud. Mm. And, uh, also, the uh, many, there is many Indian immigrants. Mm. The immigrant history is very uh, from you know the um, very uh, long. Mm. Uh, they are already uh, settled down mm. very well, and uh, they also uh, uh, ignorant of uh, Asian people. Mm. <laughs> like, uh, even uh, Indians, they, uh, they are they are Asian, but. <laughs> <laughs> they have a long history they came to uk yeah, they, they uh, many years ago wow, mm. so, wow. So, yeah. yeah i think that mm, uh, some people enjoy to ignore others then uh they can be exalted and the meaning of life oh i'm Huh? I uh, I'm worthy huh? to be respected, and I can huh? uh, discriminate huh? the poor people and yeah minority like that. Huh? However, God created all the people uh, equally, huh? so God is uh, displeased with the discrimination and haughtiness and pride. So God uh, punished. King David could be used because he was a humble, very humble. He uh, remembered how miserable he was. Uh, uh, who am I? Uh, he, uh, yeah, he remembered. I'm the youngest of the Jesse. I was, I was a shepherd. Uh, I don't deserve. Uh, to be a king. So uh, God yeah, used to him, but King Saul became very proud. So God abandoned him. At first, uh, King Saul was humble. So he was used as a king, but after he became a king, he became so arrogant and proud. So 
God uh, abandoned him. So um, uh, position and title is not important. Uh, we have to be humble always is very important. Yeah. Uh, In that day, the remnant of Israel, the survivors of the house of Jacob, will no longer rely on him who struck them down, but will uh, truly rely on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Yeah. In the day, in that day, the remnant of Israel, survivors of the house of Jacob, will, uh, yeah, they will uh, rely on the Lord and they. Uh, return to the Lord, uh, the remnant of Israel would repent and turn to God. Yeah. Mm. So God always works through a holy remnant, holy remnant. Yeah. Although the majority of those who taste these blessings come from the Lord, there is a holy remnant who will repent and become a steward of God's history. Yeah. When we read the Bible, we can realize that God uh, punished hum, uh, proud persons and uh, uh, God uses only a few remnant hmm? uh, in his history. Yeah. Who is the remnant? Hiskiah, uh, Daniel, his friends, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Mordecai, Haggai. Zechariah and Jesus and yeah, like that. Huh? Uh, so uh, even in the desperation, uh, God uh, uses the remnant. Huh? Mm. Susan, uh, when you see the God's history, God's work, uh, God's ministry, uh, do you feel that God uh, has used the remnants? I think there's so many uh, people and students come and go, and but only a rare who remain in the ministry. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, like all the people you just mentioned. Hmm. There are remnants of hmm. Israel. In uh, mm. even like I think when Elijah was mm. alive mm. he also thought you know he was the only like uh, follower of God um, but even God said there is like still people like a small mm. portion of people that still mm. um, uh, follow God so yeah. yeah in my school days so many uh, students came and yeah they had been very clever and very brilliant uh, students, but uh, 30 years later, I see that only a few remain in our ministry. They are devoting in mission field. Uh, mission Murray, uh, can you remember many of your uh, companions at the time? In the 90s, there are so many students came a to the center. A lot. Yeah. Uh, I we used to have my my team. Uh, mm. My group was like about um, how many were they? Like you know, we we separate that boys group and girls group, right? Mm. I I am the I am the one the group entered the college nineteen ninety two, my group was maybe about close to ten to fifteen in the beginning. Mm. And now the remaining is uh, about four. When you're four. Mm. Yeah. But that's the one of the most successful group in Namsan UPF Center. <laughs> <laughs> the early 90 is the like you know really boom. And after mm -hmm. that, especially in Namsan Center, I don't know other other center, but we are having really difficult time to mm. Attract more, uh, mm. more girls. Mm. Like you know, they were having. <laughs> yeah. So the married, mar 
establishing house church is the one of the biggest challenges <laughs> in oh. because there are more male co-workers than the female co-workers. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Caleb, can you remember your companions when you were raised as a boy shepherd and shepherds? How many members at the time? So when I first time visit the center, uh. Chunghung Dong Center, mm. the second floor, a uh, first floor, uh. there was a full of students. Mm. I was very surprised. <laughs> mm. Like a, like a Shijang Tong. <laughs> marketplace <laughs> marketplace and uh, and then uh and then the second year i mean i mean the uh, university year two mm. Mokdong, uh, Mokdong season boy, boy shepherd there's a yeah, boy shepherd boy mm. little shepherd mm. we have two uh boys group and two girls groups mm. each group and more than 12 people mm. Mm. And uh, after graduate, uh, just one group left, mm. and then <laughs> getting smaller, smaller. <laughs> <laughs> just few people now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think yeah, they're really, really, yeah, really uh, smart and uh, mm -hmm. uh, so people left mm. only the <laughs> Yeah, there are so many uh, smarter than Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I, I was the lowest. <laughs> <laughs> but you are so blessed because you uh, you are remnant. Huh? Wow. Yeah, we should be remnant to the end, to the end. It's very important. Jose, do you want to be a remnant to the end? I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. It can be very lonely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, wow. Suzanne, do you want to be a remnant to the end in Seretos ministry? Uh, uh, that's so weird. <laughs> um, yes, of course, of course. Uh, yeah. mm. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, we have to pray huh? to be remnant. Huh? Uh. Okay. The pride of Assyria and her king would be judged uh, severely by God. Although God used Assyria to help uh, Israel repent, Assyria will face the rod of God's wrath. Yeah. Hmm. So all the uh, people should be uh, humble always. Uh, chapter 11, the branch from Jesse. Okay. Uh, Sylvia, please read the verse one, chapter 11, verse one. Yes, sir. Mm. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from its mm. roots, a branch will bear fruit. Mm. Yeah. Why do you think the uh, prophet Isaiah uh, mm, described Israel as a shoot? A shoot from the stump. I'm not really sure. I don't even know what a shoot is. <laughs> what is that exactly? Please look at this. Yeah. Yeah. From uh, stump. Uh, a small, yeah, shoot. Israelites degenerated, and the main uh, tree had been cut hmm, by God's punishment through Assyria. So there is no hope. It seemed to be end. However, 
there was very small shoot like that. And it grows up. Wow. When we uh, read the Bible, we can see a lot of uh, desperation eh? because of the invasion and uh, mm, attacking by super foundations. Uh, Israelites seemed to be uh, to disappear. Uh, however, God uh, made some remnant and the shoot uh, uh, comes from the uh, stump. Yeah. It's God's work. Fundamentally, Jesus uh, is the shoot. Jesus came from the stump of Jesse. When Jesus was born, it was like a new green branch coming from a dead stump. It's dead stump. Uh, yeah. God would bring judgment through Babylonia, but he will all bring his glorious restoration through the promised Messiah. Yeah. Isaiah looked forward to Christ coming. Yeah. He would be a descendant of King David, son of Jesse. Yeah. Uh, when Jesus worked the earth, the spirit of the Lord uh, rested on him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Suzanne, please read the verse two. Uh, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit mm -hmm. of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. Mm, yeah. Baby in a manger, Jesus, uh, he uh, seemed to be too weak. Huh? However, what was the difference uh, between him and other kings? Uh, the Spirit of God uh, rested upon Jesus Christ. Uh, Spirit of the Lord, spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, spirit of the knowledge. Yeah. Wow. Hmm? Can you uh, talk about uh, how Jesus, uh, how could Jesus save us? Hmm? Uh, what was the uh, different characteristic fundamentally? Spirit, spirit. Spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, and knowledge of God. Yeah. Mr. Murray, can you uh, share anything about the uh, uh, spirit uh, of wisdom and understanding, counsel, might, and knowledge of God in Jesus Christ? Um, it's hard. <laughs> hard to, there, there are so, so many characteristics of the Holy Spirit, so mm. it's hard to... Um, express all but i i will say I, I would just like to talk a little bit about the spirit of counsel mm -hmm. uh, sometimes um you know there are a lot of times we felt we are left alone mm -hmm. and the, there are some situation you feel like you are you're surrounded by all enemy and mm -hmm. people who who are ready to judge and criticize mm -hmm. There are some situations, hmm. um, but when I pray, really God's peace and comfort and wisdom comes into my mind. Yeah. Um, I believe that the Spirit, Holy Spirit, really counsels me 
uh, mm. to look at look at me more objectively. Mm. What is what is my problem? What is the mm. problem problem of the uh, surrounding and situation? And mm. to uh, I can sort out whether it mm. is something that uh, because of my shortcoming and my weakness or my problem that mm. this situation is happening or mm. it is because of the fault of like era of like a people around me or mm. the system or situation or the environment so that helped me a lot to a lot to gain um not only reflecting ref reflecting on myself but mm. also reflecting on the what what would what would jesus do and mm. what uh god want me to do mm. all so all those things is like happening mm. when i pray and counsel mm. with the spirit mm. when i talk with the with the people right mm. everyone mm. has their own opinion and everyone mm. has their own bias and prejudice and sometimes they are misleading me and mm. uh giving me fake hope or fake comfort mm. to just like, oh, it's okay, Marie, um, you know, you're doing fine, you're great, which mm. doesn't really give much of comfort or peace. It just gives like temporary, um, yeah, I'm okay. Mm. I, will, I, will, I will survive, right? But uh, when we counsel the Holy Spirit, mm. it really gives, gives me a more better analysis based on the God's standard, God's, mm -hmm. God's uh, word. That that's my experience, and that's my struggle. In, mm -hmm. Yeah, in daily, daily, like you know, struggles and conflicts and inflection, in, in, like inflicts in, in usually among people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I I think Jose is like you know having same mind, the sympathy on me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. Sylvia, what kind of spirit do you need? Uh, that is a very good question. I think I need all <laughs> the whole spirit, all of the spirit. Uh, all the spirit. <laughs> I'm very lacking in, in all of these things, but um, let me see. Um, I think currently it would be more spirit of of um of understanding understanding because yeah mm -hmm. because um i feel like i mean i haven't been learning the bible for well i kind of have been i think it's mm -hmm. been about four years now mm -hmm. um and you know um every one of us we've been learning it mm -hmm. um, different lengths of time but uh when we are learning the bible we're Accumul accumulating the knowledge you know mm. of christ of who he is mm. um what is his standard uh how do we act as a child of god how do we live our days you know mm. it's 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 very knowledge based and mm. i feel like at a certain point mm. uh you know you you have different growth rates mm. and um when you pray in the spirit uh, to, you know, to really understand mm. the message that he is giving us. Mm. I feel like uh, sometimes for me, at least, uh, it doesn't go all the way through. <laughs> mm. Like I understand it at a very superficial level, mm. but I know that there's, I need to understand it like um, in a much deeper level. I know there's still so much more to grasp from mm. the message that he's giving to me mm. um and i'm i'm still struggling with that even um even now our church uh we're reading the book of john mm. and that was the first book that i read with my bible teacher mm. and um you know I, I i think this is about the fourth time that i've mm. read the book mm. And it's just very interesting. Every single time I read it, I always grasp something new. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is another level deeper that I've 
gotten mm. to. Mm. Um, and I, I feel like because of this repetition, mm. um, especially with the book of John, you know, mm. um, it was written by John after, uh, like at the very end of his life. So at this point in time, he knew, he really mm. knew Jesus. Mm. Mm. Um, so there's so much to grasp from this mm. book, especially from this book. And I feel like I really need that spirit of, of understanding so then I can have mm. at least, so I can continue deepening my relationship and, and really um, getting to the root of who Jesus mm. is and like the root of our relationship. Yeah. yeah. So I feel Good. like I really need that. Wow. Spirit of understanding. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Caleb, can you understand your daughter? Oh, I tried hard to understand my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> She's often uh, told me that you don't understand my talking, what I'm talking about. <laughs> talking, uh, speaking speed is very, very fast. Very, yeah. Chatty, chatty, and then <laughs> <laughs> sometimes complaining a lot, but uh, not easy to understand. But uh, I try, just try, um, accept her as mm. she is, and then as my daughter, and then uh, I try hard to uh. love, uh, love her. <laughs> uh. And <Sometimes> you, <laughs> you, you have been in UK for ten years. Uh, four, 14 years now. 14 years, wow. Then you can understand the UK uh, caucus, uh, native uh, caucus. Uh, I really wanted, wanted to have a good relationship with them. Mm. But the, you know, the language barrier is the uh, biggest problem. Oh. They started uh, to talk, uh, speak to me. Mm. You know what, but like that, how's the life? Mm. And I just said, uh, no normal, not too bad, <laughs> mm. uh, boring. That's that's all. <laughs> 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 and then sometimes I try to explain my situation in mm. detail, mm. but they uh, seems seemed to uh, being tired of tired of listening my poor. <laughs> and then they are busy. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I'm sad. That's why I'm sad. Mm. <laughs> yeah, there can be understanding not problem. Not easy, yeah, not easy to uh, mm. understanding them and then having relationship with them. Mm. Yeah, but you are surviving now. It's a great miracle. <laughs> in last place, place, but, yeah. I really miss uh, uh, Joseph in Canada uh -huh. and Eliza and uh, Dehan in Korea and mm. uh, Desop. <laughs> <laughs> Your friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Susan, uh, you don't have any problem in speaking, so you can understand. <laughs> young generations and many campus students how about yeah. you what kind of spirit do you need <laughs> uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe fear of God <laughs> um, mm. I think um, uh, since I, I like you know been to church my whole life, um, mm. I think kind of gone to a period of being very like very numb to the Bible or mm. Bible passage, um, or I don't feel very challenged. So mm. like sometimes if someone is. Like if someone, um, like on Sunday, if they're reading mm. the passage, mm. 
uh, I think, oh, they're gonna, the messenger is just gonna talk about this because, you know, this <laughs> I heard this before. Mm. I don't really like uh, need to pay attention. And mm. uh, also, um, like if you like surround yourself with people who aren't like very spiritual, it's like very easy to mm. lose um, uh, fear of God because like, like what are things that are normal mm. um like ungodly things you know are normal mm. so you kind of like lose grasp of um mm. fear of god yeah mm. okay thank you noah uh what kind of spirit do you need as of right now Mm. Uh, I think one, one thing that I need, especially what I think, obviously God has, has his own view of myself and I mm. might have a different view of myself mm. in terms of God's eyes. Mm. <laughs> but I believe one thing and I would agree on is that my confidence is is um low N mm. not in the sense of personal confidence mm. uh, i i feel very fortunate to have a high self-esteem mm. and just a so-called unmovable mindset mm. sometimes to a fault i would admit that but i mean courage to stand up for what is right and in this society it's normalized in the sense that mm. it's, it's all about you as an individual mm. like of now i i don't want to get into this huge topic but the idea of um, homosexuality mm. transgenderism mm. It's, it's all about me and what i feel mm. me what i want mm. me, me want. and it's and it's just having, having courage to stand up for, for what i think is right and and quite clearly what i know is right if if i'm referencing god's word entirely mm. and of course i have my own biases and they have mm. their own biases about christians but mm. it's just it's getting past that mm. it's yes. essentially taking my i don't care what anyone thinks of mm. me and bringing that to the spiritual forefront which in my opinion is lacking in the sense that I need more time to set up for what I believe. So, mm. yeah. Okay. Jose, what kind of spirit do you need practically? Uh, practically, I think I need the spirit of obedience and uh, fear of the Lord. Mm. God, always. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I need the spirit of wisdom uh, in order to serve God's uh, work. Uh, I cannot but uh, face a lot of limitations. Uh, there are so many opinions. Uh, so I don't know what uh, uh, I should do in this uh, situation uh, yeah uh, so <clears throat> that's why I cannot but pray honestly uh, for the Lord to give me the uh, spiritual wisdom spiritual wisdom yeah when we uh, uh, see Jesus he had a great wonderful wisdom 
when he helped the Samaritan woman and Nicodemus. Yeah, it was different. Uh, 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 Jesus called the 12 disciples, but uh, mm, yeah, when Jesus called uh, Peter and Levi, it was different, different. Jesus knew uh, the inner problems and their agonies and their wanting. So uh, Jesus uh, helped one by one very wisely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we cannot but be uh, uh, surprised by Jesus' uh, heavenly wisdom, heavenly wisdom. Yeah. Uh, even the uh, scholars cannot help the people. Do you know why? They approach with uh, intellectual uh, yeah, wisdom. Mm. But we need the spiritual wisdom, spiritual wisdom. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when we pray honestly to the Lord, God gives us spiritual wisdom. Uh, fundamentally, the wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, okay. So in Jesus, we can see the great vision, uh, the hope. Yeah. Mm. When he comes to establish his messianic kingdom, he will not judge by superficial appearances, but with righteousness. Yeah, verse 4 says, yeah. Uh, in his kingdom, natural enemies will become friends. Wow, it's a wonderful scene. Yeah. Uh, Jose, please read verse 6 through 8. Yes, uh, chapter 11. Yeah. Um, great. Um, the wolf will live with the lamb. The leper will, die, will lie down with the goat. Mm. And the cat and the lion and the yearling together. Mm. And a little cow will feed them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young mm. will lie together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. The mm. infant near the cobra's den. And the young child will put his to put its hand into the viper's nest. Mm. Wow. Can you imagine this? It's not like a, a Disney cartoon. Huh? <laughs> wow. It's the Garden of Eden. Uh, it means the restoration of Eden, new creation. You know, nowadays, uh, there are very brutal uh, killing in Ukraine, yeah, hmm? the superpower nations attacked uh, weak countries. Yeah, uh, they are competing through weapons. Yeah, hmm. so uh, the world is filled with so many uh, weakness. Yeah? Uh, main nations developing a uh, powerful weapon. Uh, North Korean uh, leader Kim Jong-un uh, fired ICBM in order to attack uh, America inland. Uh, yeah, and super foundations tried to make a sanction and they, uh, we don't know what will happen tomorrow. Yeah. Even though they uh, have a negotiation outwardly, but inwardly they fight each other. So, wow. Uh, in Africa, in many countries, there are massacre, uh, in annihilation, uh, so many things. Yeah. Uh, so there is no peace in the world. Uh, but. Uh, in the last day, in that day, yeah, in that day, uh, there will be a paradise yeah, and restoration of Eden, Garden of Eden. Yeah. Uh, Sylvia, do you believe that it can be done practically? 
Do you expect that even in America, there are so many races, so many people, there can be harmony and love each other, accept each other? Is there a be peace? Yeah, peace. All on earth. Um, I feel like without Jesus, <laughs> No, <laughs> I don't see it happening. <laughs> but I think that's why, you know, he gives us this hope in this passage by letting us know mm. that um, we will be at peace, I guess, with our, our natural enemies. Mm. Um, and I believe that that will only happen under his, his rule mm. because of just how um, wicked mm. our hearts can be. Mm. Um, this world is very corrupted without him mm. so yeah we we really need him for us to mm. live in that kind of peaceful kingdom mm. I guess. Mm. okay suzanne can you read uh acts chapter two uh acts chapter two uh verse 43 through 47 acts chapter two Verse 43 uh, through 47. Okay. Mm. Uh, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Wow. In the early Christian church, wow. Hmm? Everyone was filled with awe and yeah, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They had everything in common. They had a common life. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple course and broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Wow. Hmm? They loved each other. They shared all things equally. Uh, how, how, how do you think it could happen at the time? Mm. The, like, the only thing mm. um, that kept them together was, I guess, mm. Jesus. And mm. um, that is... Uh, what united them together and I guess they were also all it seems like they were all very filled with mm. like the Holy Spirit mm. um, so it uh, helped them to have fellowship with one another mm. yeah because they accepted Jesus and they uh, experienced uh, Jesus's love so they became very kind and yeah and they could share and I think that they put their hope not in the earth, but in the heaven. Yeah. We cannot lay down our properties. It's not easy. But someday uh, we'll go to heaven. Yeah. So if our hope is in heaven, we can be free from our possessions and properties. Nowadays, I go to funeral service many times. Uh, these days, you know, uh, the parents of our church members are passing away. So I attend uh, the funeral service. Uh, it's very difficult for me to appreciate uh, when the dead body is put in the coffin. Hmm? We can see uh, the dead body of the dead man the last time. Mm. At the time, most of the family members cry very loud and they apologize. Father, I 
uh, did wrong and yeah. Huh? Hmm. Fundamentally, I think that all the people are equal. Yeah. When we die, we are empty-handed. Uh, yeah, we are nothing. Uh, we uh, are dust of the ground. Yeah? Then what, where should we uh, put our hope? Yeah? Where is our final destination? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. So uh, when I uh, officiate one uh, funeral service, most of the um, family members were very rich, but they did not have a faith in God. Uh, uh, so I wanted to plant uh, gospel faith in their heart and living hope in their hearts because one church member, one of the family member asked me to uh, preach the gospel in the hearts. Uh, yeah, they were interested in properties and they are competing to make money and to uh, make their children to enter uh, the prestigious universities, but in the yeah funeral service, they're very quiet and uh, yeah they think over the death and the meaning of life. Yeah. yeah, so in Jesus we can see living hope, yeah? uh, eternal life. Yeah? So uh, the early Christian church members could be free from properties and possessions and they could share. Uh, uh. So some uh, Christians can donate a lot of money. Uh, it can be possible because uh, they experience the uh, love of God and yeah, mm, through the living hope to the heavenly kingdom. So in Jesus, only uh, the reason Jesus, uh, uh, it can be done, I think. You know, two weeks later, there will be Easter, Conf Easter day, Easter day. It's, uh, in the Christianity, Easter uh, resurrection is most important thing. Huh? Yeah. Uh, in Korean society, you know, there are so many uh, rich people. The Gangnam people, they are very rich and richer and richer. And they have a lot of uh, properties. Uh, hmm. So uh, many people want to have more apartment, more land. Huh? Uh, but uh, uh, our properties cannot be, uh, cannot be eternal. It's temporary, temporary. Uh, uh, so uh, our real hope is resurrection, resurrection. Uh, uh, so I could preach the uh, gospel of resurrection in the funeral service. Yeah. Today, I want to, yeah, all of my uh, family members, in my family members are Christians, but uh, I wanted to share uh, resurrection faith in our hearts. Yeah. My mom uh, did not leave anything, but she uh, uh, left Bible copy book. My mom prayed honestly every day for three or four hours. And she copied the Bible, whole Bible, uh, from Genesis to Revelation. So we saw uh, my mom's copying the Bible and praying and uh, sing hymns. Uh, 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 so... Uh, I we, we remember that uh, the voice of my mom's uh, crying prayer and uh, reading the Bible. Uh, it was the most important uh, properties for uh, for us. Yeah. So in Jesus, we can restore 
uh, yeah, uh, Garden of Eden, uh, fundamentally, yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, this world cannot but be a better field, better field, better field. Yeah. So wolf, lion, uh, uh, eat uh, goat and lamb like that. Yeah. Uh, but in Jesus, uh, all the people can uh, love each other, accept each other, and respect each other. Yeah. In UBF community, we can expect uh, respect all of us. I have seen the great love. Yeah. And we have to make uh, every effort to, yeah, make a spiritual community. Yeah. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17 says, the old has gone, the new creation in Christ Jesus. Uh, it, only in Jesus Christ, a new creature, new creation uh, is possible. The earth will be filled with knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Yeah. Nowadays, materialism uh, is ramp rampant, I think. But the uh, knowledge of the Lord uh, uh, should be remnant, uh, should be filled. That's why we have to send uh, many missionaries to the world and preach the gospel somehow. Uh, the glory of the reign of the Messiah will be for all people, including the Gentiles. Yeah. On the day of judgment, the Lord will gather his people to himself from the ends of the earth. He will give them victory and they will reign with him. Wow. There will be a highway for the remnant of his people from Assyria and Egypt. Yeah. Mm. Because of God's punishment, all the Israelites should be scattered. But in that day, there will be a way for the remnant. All the people will come back from the end of the earth, Assyria, Egypt, Babylonia, and many countries. Yeah. Wow, it's amazing. There will be a highway for the remnant. In Luke's gospel, chapter 15, uh, the prodigal son could not come to his father's house because of his sins. But uh, the father opened uh, the gate. So it's the highway for restoration. So even now, there is the highway uh, to the Lord. Uh, if we repent our sins, God accepts all the people. Uh, yeah. So in the gospel, we can see so many people came to Jesus and they uh, could be healed and changed, tax collector and poor people and lepers and Gentiles. Yeah, yeah, so many uh, diseased person and so many people, yeah. Mm. In Jesus, it can be done. Mm. We can hope. Okay, uh, I have to finish here uh, today. I'm sorry that, uh, yeah, Noah, what did you learn from today's passage? One thing that stuck out to me was what we were talking about at the end. Um, it was it was how how what we we have a way to to that place of peace, mm. harmony, 
which of course is nowhere on this earth mm. if we we deeply think about it mm. um no place is safe not even america mm. there is nobody who's not poor mm. especially in america mm. there's always there's always people with bad intentions mm. um and and we have essentially for lack of a better term on escape from that mm. we can have hope in something better mm. and that reminded me of hebrews chapter 11 with the with the basically the chapter of faith mm. and i'm always reminded of that because abraham mm. isn't noted in that chapter because mm. he fathered isaac mm. he was there because he he went from a place he didn't know mm. he went from from ur to canaan mm. he he was led by something he didn't understand or even know at the time mm. he just followed and he had hope in a place better or mm. outside of his realm of thinking mm. and and that remind that that in itself reminds me of Ephesians 2 8 mm. when it's for it is by grace you have been saved mm. through faith and it is not from yourselves it is a gift of God mm. not by works so no one can boast mm. so it's it's unconditional mm. God gives everybody it's a gift hmm. of course a gift is a gift can be received hmm. or it can be turned down hmm. um and and that last part at the end where not by work so no hmm. one can boast hmm. so it doesn't matter what you do how you do it hmm. nothing makes you any better than anyone else Mm. and Romans says that no one is righteous, not even one. Mm. I mean, I believe we all know that mm. nobody's even close to perfect. Mm. Um, only one who was perfect was Jesus. Mm. And he was the ransom for many. And mm. he gave us this gift. Mm. And it's, it's a decision whether we, and especially myself, take it. It's because it is a gift. It mm. it truly is a gift. If you don't know it's a gift, mm. you won't know it's there, and it's not a gift to you. It's mm. all personal. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Sylvia. What did you learn? I learned that um, our Lord is very faithful mm. uh, because. Um, throughout the passage, I feel like he continuously gave us hope mm. um, through the fulfillment of the scripture. Um, and just knowing that um, we can be restored through Jesus mm. um, makes me very, uh, I guess it gives me peace, mm. peace of mind because, um, you know, we get so caught up into thinking that we can find peace into, in the world. Mm. But knowing that that is not mm. true and it's only temporary, mm. but we can find true peace in Christ gives me mm. a lot of hope. Um, so I learned that and also that God is very just and he's fair mm. because um, although he gave honor to Assyria by using them as his instrument, mm. um, he saw that they were being very wicked <laughs> mm. and they were being very prideful. Mm. So he didn't let that um, escape his his judgment you know mm. and he still judged them even though they were being used by him mm. um so yeah that gave me a lot of hope too mm. amen thank you Jose. um yeah i learned about hope too and um the um i guess the resurrection um that uh, especially when you were commenting um um, your mom I left you uh, property that mm. I'll never so I was very inspired by that mm. thank you so much
Okay, Suzanne. Uh, uh, two things, I guess, um, from chapter 10. Mm. Um, it, uh, I think it, I was talking about earlier how I needed to hear mm. God and I think chapter 10, um, I think uh, it kind of, I uh, kind of instilled that in me, just seeing how God was used the mm. Syrians, but mm. it did not mean that they're righteous in any way. It's kind of scary to know that, you know, God can use whoever mm. he wants to and in whatever way they want. Mm. Uh, but it, you know, it doesn't mean that mm. uh, they're righteous. Um, and uh, also the in chapter 11, the mm. first verse about mm. the picture about the shoot coming from the stump of Jesse is very, is very hopeful. Mm. Uh, and especially uh, in verse six to eight, when, they talk about you know the wolf, the lamb, mm. uh, the cow, and the bear. Uh, it's it's such a peaceful image, and it brings mm. so much uh, hope. And just knowing that uh, this is what Jesus uh, mm. brings, and it mm. um, and uh, like I'm very excited to be able to see that one day. Amen. Thank you so much, all of you. Uh, let's wrap up, uh, Mr. Caleb. Please pray for us. Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, your grace upon our life, mm. upon our, uh, upon this world, mm. uh, through your son, Jesus Christ, mm. who came into this world mm. and uh, who uh, save us through uh, that's on the cross and the resurrection. Mm. He is the, our living hope mm. of the world. Mm. Father, please help us to uh, be filled with mm. your spirit mm. and know more and grow mm. in his grace. Mm. We may be used a holy remnant of mm. your, as your instrument. Mm. Father, Please bless uh, each of us mm. and uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit each day. Mm. We may reflect your grace, mm. uh, people around us, and mm. uh, many uh, wandering young souls in the uh, each uh, uh, mission field. Father, mm. I pray that uh, you, uh, you may continue to bless Nehemiah uh, Kim, empower him with your spirit, and mm. continue to serve. Uh, many souls and the Gwangju UPF, and uh, also so, uh, you may uh, uh, be with each of us, and mm. uh, we may be uh, glorify your name mm. and continue to uh, bless us to grow mm. as your people, and mm. we may bear fruit for your body. I pray Amen. in Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, have a nice weekend. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.